Hello there friends and welcome. Today we are going to do a special video all about Amber. With You're all of the different person. ways you have of I solving like her you. personal quests, you actually have three different ways. The good and supportive way, the stern and lawful way, and also the evil and mean way. Of course I don't condone you being mean to poor Amber. She does deserve all the love you can give, but you know, this is a demon path run, so we might as well choose the evil option for once. After all, a demon's got a demon. The different alignment options in her quests not only change the dialogue you get, but also the unique rewards capable of giving her new spells and even new voice Something lines. So let's see how it goes and first get started with, you know, the good and kind options. Alright, so first we have the event at Baphomet Shrine during Chapter 3. Some of the cultists would then beg Amber for mercy, where she of course asks us not to kill them. So notice that as far as Amber's quest, you actually have three different ways of dealing with them. The first you know the good align option where you support Amber and her ways of trying to show mercy to even demons and cultists and getting them to repent. The second is the lawful way, where you do let Amber to keep on preaching, but at the same time you also try to get her to believe that Instead of repenting, well, you should actually punish evildoers and cultists and demons to the fullest extent of the law. Now, it's important to know there is also a fourth way where, for this quest at least, where you actually choose to kill and execute the cultists. You should not choose this because, well, you can choose it, and it does make Amber cry. But the thing is, choosing this, unlike the evil option, will actually cause the quest to fail, so you won't be getting any of the other Amber quests. So if you want to continue, you have to go either good, lawful or evil. And if you have the toy box mod for example, you can see there are actually flags that are what basically change whether you get a good, evil or lawful ember quest resolutions, depending on the options you've picked. So if you want to try them out for different ways, before the last quest, just increase the ones that you really want to see. For example, if you want to see the evil ending, we put evil to the max, above the good and the lawful options. So first, let us be kind to Amber, as she states herself, please be kinder, and go with the good align options, and this does result in a unique reward at the end. So we'll keep supporting her, and telling her that she can actually get even the most evil of enemies, like demons, to repent. I believe in you, you do want to change, don't you? Oh, Amber turns to you with a smile, it's always nice and heartwarming. Now let's go for Ember's second main quest, where we get her to talk with Nocticula, the succubus queen. Ember? So that's her then? <laughs> Ember already <laughs> starts crying. I think it's pretty neat that this quest is actually voiced both for Nocticula and some Ember lines. I can't stand these noises! I... I know what you had to do. I'm so sorry. So sorry. If only I could ease your pain somehow. And of course we can already pick the evil option right here, but first let's go with the good one. In my realm, I decide to whom I should listen and whom I should hang. So, where were we? My pain? My sorrows? I'm so sorry. You're the most miserable soul I've ever seen. What is this saccharine drivel? What do you even know of me, Nat? I've seen your city. You were the one who built it. It is the way you wanted it to be. And this is what you brought her to me for. And here we already have our triple alignment options again. Good, lawful and evil. There's also a chaotic one, but I don't think it really matters in the long scheme as far as solving Ember's personal quest. So let's go with good for now. As if I hadn't seen enough sanctimonious boars in my life. So, what do you suggest I do, Preacher? No, no. Gods can't help anyone. They're just like us mortals. Silly, frightened, clueless. And that's Ember's You're almost loading yourself. screen line. You know better than anyone that no one can save you. No one... Save me? From what exactly? From yourself. From what you've done to yourself. <laughs> I always love when she close left. Do you think she took my words to heart? Pro 
Probably. That would be great. Indeed. I told you to get out! I don't want to hear your squeaky voice again! And now let's do Ember's final quest in the good, caring and supportive way. And to heal the demons during chapter 4, you, are, you actually also get to meet them again here. How are your wounds all healed up? <laughs> it's a lunatic from Malusian era. Come and join our side, let us put an end to this war together. <laughs> That's right, demons, mortals, we can all be friends. The true path of friendship with our Azata main character, of course. So even Scylla talks, reject evil when we accept you as our friends. That's a unique stance for a paladin. Screw this invasion, the war wound, and buff on head twice over. Friends, thank you, we won't let anyone hurt you. Oh, that's nice. And now Ember tries to get everyone to repent once more. So let's close it all together and finally end this war. We don't have to fight him and repent and come to our side. I would personally never pick this option, but you know. We are on the path of friendship and mercy. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Yeah, that's more along the lines of what I would say. So the interesting part is that now Sigma will also appear now and give a speech. This can only happen if you, well, take Ember to speak with an Octicula and don't act dismissive towards Ember. But I do believe you can still get a good outcome without having an Octicula appear here. She already explained everything to you, remember what she said to you the last time you met. <laughs> I recall a great deal of crying and sniffling. An Octic always has the best dialogue lines. How did you make these hardened scoundrels, these blasphemers and murderers with blood dripping from their hands repent? Truly only Amber could manage such a feat. The Redeemer Queen, <laughs> hello. You're just afraid to accept it, don't be afraid. <laughs> what nonsense. Unfortunately, as Nocticular herself said, she isn't our personal bodyguard, so she won't actually fight the demons for us, but could be pretty funny, as she does have a very powerful way of the Banshee spell, and an extremely overpowered aura passive that fascinates everyone around her. I already have a guide here linked to the side on how to defeat Nocticular and what makes her the strongest demon lord gameplay-wise. <laughs> In the name of all that is unholy. So that's your new title, the Redeemer Queen, yeah, let's... Let's go with this one. <laughs> the next person who calls me that risks becoming acquainted with my collection of torture implements. That's actually a plus for some of the viewers, I'm sure. As if, do your own fighting, yeah, so she won't really help us with the battle. Queen, she pretends not to understand, but she understands everything. Death to mortals and glory to Baphomet. Fun thing that Tazgarod conveniently forgets we've just demolished Baphomet at the end of chapter 4, but okay. Okay, buddy. I'm sure Baphomet's going to help you. It all worked out so strangely. We've killed many people. We've saved many people. These knights came here to kill each other, but instead, they became friends. Everyone is going to become a friend whether they like it or not on our Azata mythic path. Everyone is praising me, but I know I did nothing special. I just reminded them of something they already knew. And those demons... Back in the Purple City, they laughed at my words, but I saw they were listening. I believed they would one day remember my words and understand them. And it happened. If humans can stop being evil, so can demons. Even demon lords, like the Redeemer Queen. So you think Mokticula is now on the path of good? Of course. She is very proud. She'd never say it out loud. But I see that she has changed. You know, I pray to the demon lords every day and ask them to come oh, man, to their senses. Oh, Ember is great, praying even to demon Vizcari lords. Vizcari and Baphomet don't get listen to, to me, but she... she's different. I know she hears everything. Maybe one day, not soon, but one day, she will get out of the abyss. And for those that follow Pathfinder lore, this does actually happen. Nocticula does officially become the Redeemer Queen. 
Which is a bit weird to me, because, you know, Nocticola has committed so many blasphemous evil deeds throughout thousands of years, if not more. She's basically the first succubus in the setting. So, you know, before Nyrissa, before Arilu, Nocticola was already committing all sorts of evil blasphemies, yet she still gets to repent in the end, which is very weird. But, you know, whatever goes. They weren't really cultists. They were good people who just got confused and started to think they were cultists. I just reminded them who they really are. Wait, what do you think? About me? About these knights? About everything that's happened? They are certainly right to call you Saint Amber and Amber the Righteous. Now you're saying that too. But I know I'm entirely ordinary. You've always been there for me. When I was scared and when I was doubtful, you supported me. If it weren't for you, I'd probably be long dead. Thank you. Oh, and that's probably the most heartwarming dialogue line that you can get with Ember. Only during the path of good. An interesting note about doing this quest the good way is that Ember will actually get a plus two morale bonus to her charisma from her new Secret of Serenity passive that also gives her a new spell, a level 9 spell, also called Secret of Serenity. It only affects enemies, has a will saving throw, and if they fail the save, they won't be able to attack for one round. This does has a lingering effect because it can last up to your caster level worthing rounds, so 2 minutes at max caster level, and they'll have to keep saving, so it can be a good spell, especially if you want your Amber to be an enchantment focused caster. Now let's go for the lawful way of resolving Amber's quests, where you know we actually try to get her to punish the cultists that deserve it. She does still believe they can change. And now let's do the Nocticula event with the lawful option. I don't think it changes that much. I, so she believes that deep down everyone is good, even creatures that are evil by nature. I don't know what nature is and don't care a whit about cosmic good and evil. They are but labels thought of by philosophers. I know what power is. Pleasure. Desire. Oh, this childish babble merely amuses me. Nothing more. And now we get the lawful option. I doubt you'll be able to understand her message. You think this You're a demon. Of course, sniveling is worthy of no my attention. I am first and foremost myself. All who told me who I should be came to regret it. Leave it to windbag scholars to waffle on about how Eve able to fathom the path of good. I may be a demon. A demon lord. But I understand perfectly well what goodness is. I understand it. And I despise it. Do you think she took my words to heart? Who knows? I suppose you're right. We'll see what happens. And now we have Ember's last quest, but in the lawful path. So even at the start, the dialogue is already different. There is a new unfamiliar undercurrent in Ember's voice for the first time since you met. She seems genuinely angry. So we have been successful in getting Ember to punish evildoers and cultists, instead of repenting them. Everyone who could change their minds has already done so, this temple should not be persuaded but destroyed. Although even then Ember tries to still see the good in their hearts. I think this part is unique too, sparks flicker in her eyes and small flames dance on the tips of her fingers. You can't help but shudder as you realize how formidable this fragile elven girl has suddenly become. And now Ember goes full punishment mode on everyone. That's enough, enough of this nonsense. I think it's actually the first time where you see Ember get really angry and mad at demons and cultists that she was trying to get to repent. I've talked about goodness for so long, you are blind and deaf to good words. I personally think this is the more reasonable way of doing it, you know, because she does still get the people who listen to her to repent, but for the ones that don't, she's going full punishment mode. I am sorry I have to do this to you, if only you had listened to me before, that's harsh. Oh, she actually already starts burning everyone. Forgive us, but I think it's too late. I'm so sorry I have to punish them. I didn't want anyone to be good only because they feared punishment. And I don't want people to be afraid of me. But what else could I do if they wouldn't listen to me and kept fighting and everyone would die? It turns out... Punishment saved them. You told me it was true, and I didn't believe you, but you were right. And we actually get to ask her what kind of fire spell she used, because 
if you complete her quest in the lawful way, she gains a new fire spell, a unique spell that only the punishment Ember will have access to. This trick... Soot told me about it, but I didn't want to use it. It's scary. Even I'm scared when I do it. I'm sorry I had to. But if I hadn't scared those good people, we would have had to kill them all, wouldn't we? If people weren't so silly, we could have just talked to them. But they are very, very silly. So sometimes we have to do scary things. You've taught me a lot of things. Sometimes you were stern, but that's a good thing. Because you were right and I was wrong. Now I also know how to be stern when it's needed. Thank you. So instead of a more naive Ember, we get a more stern Ember. And here we have her unique lawful spell, Storm of Burning Righteousness, that is capable of dealing 10d6 points of fire and 10d6 points of holy damage to all of the enemies. And if they fail the save, they also catch on fire, taking 2d6 fire and 2d6 holy damage each round. Her alignment still remains neutral good, which is nice. So now let us do it the evil way with our demon mythic character. Amber looks down sadly. Now let's do the Nocticula event with the evil options, of course. I know what you had to do. She's insane, she doesn't know what she's and, saying. And yes, I've noticed. But let her talk. It's amusing at the very least. And now we have the evil for. option, of course not. You think this the little fool spouting gibberish is worthy always. of my attention? Then get her out of my sight. And now we have the last of Ember's quest during chapter 5, and she already starts doubting herself here because you were mean and pretty evil towards Ember. Why did I ever think my words could help anyone? And of course there's another evil choice here. The redeemed have listened to you and where did it get them? We'll go but spare us your useless sermons this time. Oh, poor Amber, I failed him, didn't I? Even in the end, despite we dismissing Amber, she still tries to get the cultists and the demons she repent. Unfortunately, everyone just dies regardless. And then she begs for forgiveness, poor Amber. I'm sorry, it's all my fault. Amber falls on her knees and watches as the people who followed her teachings perish. And this here is when things really get rough. Amber is basically left traumatized. She doesn't even remember who you are anymore. Have you forgotten me? I don't know, I guess. Why are you crying? Everyone's dead. Everyone. Everyone's dead. Oh man, poor Amber, it's heartbreaking. Do you remember who you are? Who am I? Um, who am I? Alright, now this is harsh. Embers are warm, they keep the cold away at night. You know, everyone burned, there's no one left. I mean, you can send Ember away, but of course you're going to keep her as an evil demon. And the option is just, I have to go. <laughs> just don't die to you, like everyone. And here's the special thing about doing this the evil way. Ember actually gets new voice sets, so new voice lines when you click on her and during combat, for example. Don't leave me here. And then... Who are you? Something bad happened. <laughs> And she even cries. And then the saddest of them all. I used to have friends. They used to have names. There's not that many new lines, but I do think it's nice that they went the extra mile and put effort into this. Especially because I don't think Ember gains anything gameplay-wise at least when you go the evil path for her quest. Well, so this was it for my Ember quest event guide. I hope you've appreciated this video with all of the different ways of solving Ember's personal quest and the best part as I said before is that they all have their own unique rewards, even the evil path for new voice sets for Ember. As usual, please remember to support the channel if you can by liking, subscribing and even becoming a member. Thank you for watching and see you next time friends.